Welcome everyone to our service tonight. We have a lot of empty spaces tonight. We have a lot of folks gone in different directions. So, uh, But thank you for being here, being part of our service. We come together to, this afternoon to worship the Lord. And uh, we ask that, uh, that you enter into our service with us. Let's begin our service in prayer. Father, thank you for all of the blessings that you give to us. And we're so thankful that we can be here tonight to be a part of your service. We pray that as we go through this service that we will learn things that we need to put into our lives and our lives will be better in service to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. First song of Satan will be number 324, Alas, Did My Savior Bleed. Though I've been mentioned, we got a lot out for camp, things like that. That means everybody here is going to have to sing for at least two or three other people tonight. So let's all lift our voices in praise to God. <clears throat>
kind and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that uh, you've given us the privilege to assemble again this evening, Father. We just pray that uh, we have come here for no other reason but to worship you, the true and living God, that our worship tonight will come up acceptable in thy sight. We pray, Father, that we'll take the things from the lesson tonight that uh, and we'll apply it to our lives and that we'll live closer to thee in the days ahead. We've got many here, Father, in the congregation that are sick. We just pray that uh, you would reach down and, and bless each one of them, Father, with a special blessing. We have those, Father, that are traveling tonight and they're in camp, they're in mission efforts, Father, we just pray that uh, you would be with each one of them to help uh, things be done, Father, that will further the borders of your kingdom and give them a safe return to us, Father. We have many efforts that's going on uh, during this month, Father, and we just pray for each one of those efforts. We pray, Father, for Brother Steve as he brings the lesson to us tonight. We just pray a bless, special blessing to be upon him, Father, as he works in thy service, that you would just bless him and, and bless the, the lesson tonight and help him, Father, present it in a way that would be most beneficial. We're just so thankful, Father, for the leadership of our congregation here and for all those that have a part in the work here, Father. We just we're so thankful and we pray a special blessing to be up each one, on home each one of those. We just pray now, Father, that uh, we strive each day to live our lives closer to Thee, but we know, Father, that we fall short from time to time, and we just pray, Father, for, our, for Thy forgiveness as we strive to do better. Father, we are so thankful for all this, but we are most thankful for Thy precious Son, Jesus, who came and gave his life on the cross that we could have hope of eternal life. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> song of invitation tonight, if you want to mark it in the song book, is number 907. Hark the gentle voice, number 907. This time, if you're capable, ask if you will to please stand for the singing of the song before the lesson. Birds are lifted at Calvary, number 907. <laughs>
Corinthians 13, verse 5. Explain yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do, do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified, but I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Thank you, Brother James. Good evening. It is good to be here tonight and thank you for this opportunity and thank you for being here. If you're visiting with us, please know that you are our honored guest. And if you are here tonight uh, because you love God and you want to take another opportunity to worship God and be fed from His Word, then thank you for being a part of our study tonight as we take a few minutes and allow God to speak to us. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, Jeremiah said, or we read there, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. And the Lord said, You have seen well, because I am watching my word to perform it. Now that might seem like a strange verse to begin with this particular lesson tonight, especially if you've looked in the bulletin. But it's the principle there. Now, in that passage, there's some symbolism and a lot of study as we uh, re would read about God and His dealing with His rebellious people. But that isn't our lesson. But the principle there is very, simply this. And it carries into our thoughts for tonight. God is saying to Jeremiah, Are you seeing what I need you to see? Are you seeing what you need to see in order to continue to hear what it is that I have to say and what you need to do? And that makes me think of John 4 and verse 35 when Jesus said, uh, Look and see that the fields are ripened to harvest. Now Jesus there was using their understanding of, of fields and grain and so forth to say, Look, look at all of these souls. Look and see. Jesus was saying to his disciples, Do you see what I need you to see? Because I'm about to show you something even greater. And that, makes me, that takes us, I think, into what James read just a moment ago in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, where Paul, through inspiration, tells us to examine ourselves, to see if we're in the faith, to see if Christ is in us and we're in Christ the way we should. As we look into Scripture, we understand that the principle is there that God wants us to see what He needs us to see. And we need to reflect on the things that He is doing in our lives and the work that He is unfolding among us. And so it is with that thought that I want us to think about Vacation Bible School just a little bit. You know, sometimes Vacation Bible School, and very first, let me start out by saying to you from the very onset before I say another word, is that this is not a, a VBS report. Absolutely not. And it is not, and if you are sitting in the audience tonight and listening to this and say, well, because of uh, other circumstances, I wasn't able to be here. I had to work or I was out of town and it just couldn't be avoided. Please understand at the very outset, this is not, there is nothing negative about this lesson. 
Don't think that, oh, he's going to give me a guilt trip because I couldn't be here. Absolutely, positively, no way. That's not what this lesson is about. But instead, I believe there are some things that we can talk about that I saw in VBS that ought to be a shot in our arm, that ought to be an encouragement for us to continue to do exactly what God began during a few days that we spent together. You say, wait a minute, I thought we had VBS. So I want us to think about that for just a few minutes. Sometimes if we're not careful, we get into habits. And if we're not careful, VBS is one of those habits. We have vacation Bible school, and we've got this list made, and, and we work hard, and our teachers did, and, and our workers did, and we worked hard, and we did it. And at the end of the week, um, you know, the next day, I, I go to Walmart, and uh, I'm kind of walking zombie along, and a sweet lady says, oh, excuse me, and uh, I didn't mean to get in your way. And I'm like, I just finished VBS. I don't think you can get in my way. I'm that tired, and you were that tired. And so we kind of check it off our list, and let's move on to the next thing, and then we just forget about it. But may I suggest that as we think just a little bit, some, there are some observations that I made that I want to share with you from which I learned some Bible lessons that I believe you and I need to learn. And that's what I want us to study for just a little while tonight. So if you weren't able to be here this year, that has nothing to do with what you can learn from this lesson. So I want us to think for just a few minutes about some of those observations and some lessons that we learned. Now, but let me stop and time out and lead with a disclaimer. I, I want to warn you up front that this lesson will stir you up if you let it. This lesson will challenge you if you let it. It'll provoke you to do more for the Lord if you let it. I'm going to give you some outright challenges. And I might even speak in the Tishomingo County uh, dialect and just double dog dare you to do some things. But as I think about Bible school that we just went through and some things that I saw, first of all, I saw truth working. I saw truth working. Our, our teachers worked very hard to teach lessons but I saw truth working not just in those classrooms, in other places. It makes me think of what Isaiah said in Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, when he said to Isaiah, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word, he says, just in that same way. That rain doesn't go back up, it goes in. In the very same way my word that goes out from my mouth, listen to this, it shall not return to me empty. It shall not return to me empty. In fact, it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in that which I sent it. Now, do you and I believe that? Do we really believe that? If we put our hands to the plow, if we put our, 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 our hearts and our lives into the business of doing what God wants us to do, He said, my word acted out through my disciples, my, my children doing what we're supposed to do, it will do exactly what I intended for it to do. Now, you might not be able to see everything you'd like to see, and you might not be able to count all the things you'd like to count, but I promise you that my word will do exactly what I said it would do. Do you and I believe that? Do we believe that? Now, the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. That's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 8 and verse 11, that parable we often study. He said in, Luke, in verse 15, As for that, the good soil, they are those who hearing the word hold fast in good and honest hearts and bear fruit with patience. So in other words, it takes some time for that fruit to, to come to fruition, for that to happen, but it will happen. In those good and honest hearts, if that seed is planted, it will work, but it takes some time. I saw truth working. I cannot help but... Think of a quote, uh, being the English teacher, lover of words that I am, every day I put a quote on the board, two quotes on my board in my classroom, every day. One is from literature somewhere, one is from scripture. And I always think of one that I put up without fail, I can't wait for that day because somebody always says, wait, what, what does that mean? We don't get that. Because it says, patience 
colon, in time the grass becomes milk. Did you get that? My students say, what are you talking about? You can't get milk from grass. I say, wait a minute, yes you can. What eats grass? Where are you getting milk, cow? What's cow eat? Oh. But it takes a little while for the grass to do what it does in the cow, and the cow to do what it does with what the grass, and then... And God said, if you will send my word out, it will do exactly what I promised it would do. If you will plant the seed, it will find a heart. I saw the truth working because, did you know, you know, I look at numbers too as a, a BBS coordinator, but when I looked at those numbers, we didn't go up, we didn't go down. That was wonderful to me. You know why? Because we had consistent attendance. And I look, we had consistent attendance with our visitors. We had kids who got on those buses and kids who had themselves dropped off or were dropped off on Monday and then again on Tuesday and then again on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and they came every day. Something about you, something about the truth that you were showing them in, with your words and with your heart caused them to keep coming back. I saw the truth working last week. I can't tell you how joyous it was for somebody to say to excuse me, to say to me, you know, I went to Walmart one afternoon after Bible school, we had to pick something up. And I went out, and you know what I saw? I saw two of our visitors. I think it were two that, that came on one of the buses. And they were in line with their parents. They were over, I didn't get to speak to them. But you know what? I, something caught my attention. Folks, I'm not making this up, this is real. They said those little uh, girls were standing in the Walmart line with their mother, singing VBS songs that they heard here and heard in the classes. You know, truth works. I saw truth working. You may not know this, but we had two little girls that are associated uh, with this congregation through family members removed. And, but the Sunday morning after Bible school, they were here. They insisted that their mother and daddy bring them back because something impressed them about what was going on here. I saw truth working. I saw truth working in uh, teenagers. Teenagers that I've seen grow over the uh, weeks, who were over the year, I mean, and were willing to do things that they hadn't done before. I'll try that. I'll, I'll teach or I'll assist or I'll be a part of that. They wouldn't have done that a year ago. So, number one, I saw truth working. Number two, I saw faith applied. I saw faith applied, and when I think about that, I think about James 1, 21 and 22, where James says, Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. But he doesn't stop there. The word has to be, you have to get rid of sin and let the word be implanted. Yes, yes, and another yes. But then there's one more yes, and that's in the next verse. But be doers of the word. Receive it, yes. In a pure heart, yes, but then do something with it. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. And that makes me think of Philippians 2, verses 12 and 13. Paul says there to those brethren, My beloved, as you have obeyed, not only now, but in my presence, but much more in my absence. Watch what he says. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He didn't say earn your salvation there. He didn't say rack up. Uh, uh, my points for heaven, absolutely not. But he said what? Get about the business of living your salvation. Put your faith in action. Apply it. How do I know that's what he says? Verse 13. For it is God who works in you. To what? Both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God works in me so that I can work for him. This week, during Bible school, I saw faith applied. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but we had more adults working than we did in class. There were yellow shirts everywhere. It looked like a canary convention. We had people working everywhere, and you took my child. We had teachers teaching, but we also had people who were willing to make sacrifices. I know that there were, were several... Um, who couldn't be here, but there were several who said, I can't be here this day, but I can be here this day, but I can't be here, but I can be... I said, what I do? Yes. 
I had folks who came on Monday who weren't here Tuesday, and I had folks here on Tuesday who weren't here on Monday, and folks here, do you understand where I'm going? There was never a moment when we didn't have enough people in the hall, never a moment when we didn't have enough people working in those places. There were sacrifices made. I don't know if you know this or not, and I want to be careful not to infringe on somebody else's uh, rights here, but I don't know if you know this or not, but some of our teenagers, one in particular, was actually talked about negatively in the social outside setting for choosing to be at Bible school and to teach and to be a part of class and to do those kinds of things. We had teenagers who made choices who did things they'd never done before. We had some some adults who did things, stepped outside of their comfort zone, who made some sacrifice. I've never done that before, but I'll try it if you want me to. Never say that to me. Because you will. And they did. And not only did they do well, they did extremely well. When we apply our faith, God will use us. When I think about Bible school uh, a couple of weeks ago, I cannot help but think about Matthew 25. It makes that parable come alive to me. Each according to his several ability. Take what you've got and do with what he gives you. And I promise you, God says, I'll use it and I'll double it. And that's what I saw. Now, I want to challenge you here for just a moment. Before we go to the next and the last one, as I said, we had a number of our young people who came up here. We had some of them who said to me, okay, I have situations where I can't be here, here and here, but I will be here this day and this day. Can I work those days? And they came up here and they made it that point, if they could, to be a part of that. And they were here during Bible class. They could have been somewhere else. They were working in the puppets. They were working in the halls. They were working in the classrooms, in the parking lots, doing things we needed them to do and growing in the process. I challenge you, every adult in this room, I challenge you to find out their names and send them a card and say, thank you for being what we need here at Boonville. I challenge you to get their names. I'll give them to you. I'll ask Miss Jimmy to. Um, and send them a card and say, thank you for coming up here and being at BBS when you could have been somewhere else. Now, number three, I'll tell you what else I saw. I saw opportunity provided. Opportunity. And when I think about that verse, I think about, or that point, I think about these two verses. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, and this, this is not the first time he used this phrase. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, for a wide door for effective work has been opened to me. Often the idea of an open door is just that, an opportunity. And Paul said an effective work, a wide door has been opened to me for effective work and there are many adversaries. Notice Paul didn't say but, he said and there are many adversaries. And so rest assured the devil was at Bible school. He was here every day. He was here when the doors opened and when the doors closed. You may not be aware of that, but he was. He was there discouraging us. In fact, I was a little concerned. We, had, we have kids who come from different backgrounds who are invited, who climb on buses and climb into cars, and they come up here wondering what they're going to find. And during the week, we, some of that drama, some of the, the unfortunate drama that's out there in the world followed some of those kids up here. And almost I was afraid going to pull them away. but they didn't. They had a chance to hop in that car and leave. But instead of following back into that, they they came back to Bible class and were excited to do that. The devil will always try to stop us. But I want you to notice here what he says. There were adversaries, but there's a door. An open door is an opportunity. Any door that opens will also what? Close. And folks, I want you to think about that as we get to this final point. But then Paul said, or Jesus said in John 4, 35, let me remind you again, what did he say? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see. Look, look and see that the fields are white to harvest. Please think about the opportunities that we have. Those children who were up here with us and singing those Bible school songs while they stood in Walmart uh, uh, in the line, they're going to forget those songs. 
as time passes because that's what time does. They're going to forget about what they learned up here if they don't get a chance to learn it again. I challenge you. I double dog dare you to come up here and ask to take that registration list and pick out one name. One name. And send a card. Make a phone call. Or let me be really bold. Drive over to that house and say, I know you don't know me, but your children came to Bible school where I worship. And we would really love it if you came back. And I promise you, one thing is going to happen for sure. They're going to look at you like you have grown two heads and absolutely lost your mind because such does not happen in 2019. But second, if you will remember Luke 8 and verse 11 and keep throwing the seed out, God said there is a willing heart out there that's waiting. I don't know if any of you know what broadcasting fertilize is. Don't ever let your granddaddy, when you're 10 years old, trick you into, hey, you want to go help me work? What are we going to do? We're going to broadcast fertilize. That sounds great. That means you're going to take a heavy bucket and walk the fields slinging fertilize. God said, if you'll just keep slinging those seeds, there's a heart out there waiting. So as I think about Bible school, there are a lot of lessons. I saw a lot of things that made me want to do better that made me want to keep going. What did you see? What did you learn? And what will you do as we think about it? What will you do? Jeremy and I talked about this. I still got that habit from uh, when I taught in Tennessee. I keep pointing at the screen. It's up there. I'll learn eventually. But what, did you, what will you do? So, again, this is positive. Don't say, well, he's, try, I, he's made me feel bad because I couldn't be here. Absolutely not. There were things that ought to make us excited about the opportunity. Folks, too many times Bible school is in just another dog and pony show that we do. But that, is, that wasn't the case here. God has opened a lot of doors, both outside and inside. If you have gotten excited about serving the Lord during Bible school, don't you let that die. Let it keep going. Again, don't forget, I double-dog dare you to get a name, send a card, write a note. If you're here tonight and you're not a child of God, you're missing out on what it means to be able to serve God, to know how exciting it is to see the eyes of others light up when they, they get a scripture. But most of all, you're missing out on what it means to be saved. If you've never obeyed the gospel tonight, but you believe that Jesus is God's son, and you're willing to repent of your sins, meaning simply you're going to turn your back on the life of sin and do your very best to live for God, Acts 17 and verse 30. And you're willing to confess that Jesus is the Son of God, Matthew 10, 32 and 33, to live it as well as say it. And be buried with Him in baptism, Acts 22 and 16, to have your sins washed away so that you can walk a new life. If you're not walking that life as a Christian tonight, it may be the reason why often we don't see the, the joy and the strength and the enthusiasm in the work of the Lord is because we haven't been in the work of the Lord like we should. Tonight, if you need to respond to heaven's invitation, won't you come while we stand and while we sing? Hark the gentle voice of Jesus
like to join with Tommy in welcoming everyone again to the Sunday evening services here at the Boonville Church of Christ. Extend a warm welcome especially to our visitors and it's our prayer that you'll be able to attend with us again here soon. Our next scheduled service will be Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. I do have a few announcements this evening. Sympathy is extended to Melanie White and the death of her uncle Har Harold Certain in Cincinnati, Ohio this past week. Also, remember the Teen Mission VBS June <clears throat> excuse me, 26th through the 29th in Tishomingo Church of Christ. If you can help at all with that, please see Stephen Hodgen this evening. Also, we have a note. Thank you for sharing your love by providing cupcakes for the Relay for Life Survivors Dinner. The cupcakes were not only delicious, but a huge success. Your time, talent, and most of all, your love for others are greatly appreciated. The Relay for Life Survivors Dinner team. And also for the ladies, the Women's Church League softball team will practice tonight after evening church services. If you have not had the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, today it is prepared back in the little chapel in the back as you go out to the left. If you'll go there at this time, Someone will be there to serve you. If there are no other announcements, I ask if you're capable, please stand for the singing of this closing song tonight, number 755, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Let us bow, please. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you've given us. We thank you for letting us come out tonight and study another portion of thy word. May we take the lesson we have heard tonight, Heavenly Father, and apply it to our lives and take on the challenge that Brother Stephen has given to us, Heavenly Father. And let's reach out to someone that thinks the impossible of us, Heavenly Father, and let's just show them that we do care for them and God does care for them also, Heavenly Father. Be with the ones as mentioned on their on the sick list tonight, Heavenly Father, be with them. Only you can restore them back to the normal walks of life that they wish, Heavenly Father. Be with the fathers today, Heavenly Fathers. Today is Father's Day, and be with them and bless them in each way you can. The ones that's lost loved ones, Heavenly Father, just be with them and comfort them in the only way that you can, Heavenly Father. Be with the leaders of this church, Heavenly Father. Continue to be with them and let them lead this church in the way that we, the way that we need to go and in accordance to your will, Heavenly Father. Be with us now, Heavenly Father, as we go our separate ways. Forgive us where we fail you. All these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.